Example 2a wants us to prove that 1 plus tangent squared x divided by 1 plus cotangent squared x is equal to tangent squared x. Now, there's not much we can do with the right-hand side of this equation, so let's start with the left-hand side of this equation. And I'm just going to rewrite what the left-hand side says. Now, both of these things can be rewritten using various forms of the Pythagorean identity. So if you look at the beginning of this outline, the numerator 1 plus tangent squared x is the same thing as secant squared x, and 1 plus cotangent squared x is the same thing as cosecant squared x. And the way that we were able to get here was by the Pythagorean identities. Okay, from there, we know that secant is 1 over cosine, and cosecant is 1 over sine. And so if we change their location from the numerator to the denominator and vice versa, then we know by the reciprocal identities we would get sine squared x over cosine squared x. And that was by the reciprocal identities. Okay, and then from algebra, that can be rewritten as sine of x over cosine of x, and that whole quantity squared, and that's just from algebra, or you could say like properties of exponents. And then using another reciprocal identity, we know that sine of x over cosine of x is equal to tangent of x. And so notationally, that's just tangent squared x. And that ends up with the right-hand side. So I'm going to write my little symbol here to indicate that I am done with this proof. Part B wants us to prove that sine of theta times cosecant of theta minus sine of theta is equal to cosine squared theta. There's not a whole lot we can do with the right-hand side of this equation, so let's go ahead and start with the left-hand side. And I'm just going to rewrite the left-hand side. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and distribute the sine into both of those terms. So sine of theta times cosecant of theta ends up being 1 because that's sine of theta times 1 over sine of theta. And then the second term, sine of theta times sine of theta, gives us sine squared theta. So the way that we were able to justify this step was uh, the reciprocal identity, since I rewrote this term with the reciprocal identity, and then also distribution, because I distributed sine of theta into both terms. So sine of theta times 1 over sine of theta just ends up being 1. And then we have 1 minus sine squared theta. And that ends up equaling cosine squared theta because of the Pythagorean identity. And that is equal to the right-hand side. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my little symbol there. That in completes example two for us. To disprove that an equation represents an identity, it is enough to find a single counterexample. To prove an identity, start from the more complicated side and use algebra and the known identities to transform it to the other side. Or you could change each side separately and independently to get the same expression. Note that all the steps you are using must be reversible. So example 3a wants us to answer whether the equation is an identity, and if it is, we need to prove it, and if it's not, we need to disprove that it's an identity. So 
part A says sine of x is equal to cosine of x. Now, remember earlier I said that these types of equations are sometimes true for certain values of x. And if x is 45 degrees on the unit circle, then the x value is root 2 over 2, and the y value is root 2 over 2. And so this equation holds true if x is equal to 45 degrees, as well as some other locations. But it's not going to be true for all locations. And so this turns out it's not an identity. And let's do this by providing one single counterexample. Let's say that x is equal to 30 degrees. Now, what does that look like on the unit circle? Here's 30 degrees. And the coordinates of the terminal point here are going to be root 3 over 2. And then the y value is going to be 1 half. And so sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half, and cosine of 30 degrees is equal to root 3 over 2, and these are not equal. Therefore, this is not an identity. So part B, we want to show that this thing is an identity. So I'm going to start off with the right-hand side, which is equal to cosecant of x times cosine of x plus sine of x. Now, the cosecant portion, I'm going to rewrite that as 1 over sine of x and then just leave the stuff in the brackets alone in this step. And the way that we were able to rewrite that was because of the reciprocal identity. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and distribute that term in the 1 over sine x. And if I distribute, then we're going to get cosine of x over sine of x plus sine of x over sine of x. So we were able to get to this step using distribution. And then I'm going to come over here because I'm running out of room. And cosine of x over sine of x is equal to cotangent of x and then sine of x divided by sine of x just ends up equaling 1. And we got the cotangent of x part using one of the reciprocal identities. And that is equal to the left-hand side. And so we are done with this proof. All right, for part C, I'm going to start off with the left-hand side. And I'm going to distribute the tangent squared alpha into both of these terms. So if I do that, then I get tangent squared alpha plus tangent squared alpha times cotangent squared alpha. And we got that by distributing or distribution. And then I know that tangent squared theta times cotangent squared theta, I can rewrite that part. Sorry, I said theta. I meant to say alpha. So cotangent squared alpha is the same thing as 1 over tangent squared alpha using the reciprocal identities. And we'll end up getting tangent squared alpha plus, if we multiply those two things together, we get plus 1. So this was just, we got to this stage through multiplication. 
And then from here, tangent squared alpha plus one is one of the Pythagorean identities. So this ends up being secant squared alpha And now through a reciprocal identity, this ends up being 1 over cosine squared alpha. And lastly, we can rewrite that as 1 over 1 minus sine squared alpha using one of the Pythagorean identities. And that is now equal to the right-hand side, so we are good, and I can put my little symbol. That concludes example C.